eHill671 here and today I'm going to demonstrate how to install a dual flush conversion kit which is also I guess considered a repair kit into uh, an older style toilet whose toilet has um, the old type of hardware float valve um, and flapper flush valve and all that so this will be a considerable upgrade for this toilet um, one thing I've noticed is that, you know, they make it sound super easy on the box. It says no, no tool install. Well, that's not exactly true. Um, I suppose if, if the, all the hardware, existing hardware had already been removed, you could install this kit with no tools, but, um, I'm going to show you the reality of, of what it actually takes to get this stuff out of here and drain the water and all that kind of thing before putting the new stuff in. Okay, so I've got all the parts out of the kit and again as it says here no tools required. Well, that's a stretch because um, I've actually gotten out the tools that I've needed to complete past installations you're going to need some kind of adjustable pliers, a small adjustable wrench if you end up changing the water supply line from the angle stop or shut off valve, screwdriver for prying, pushing, chiseling, whatever. You're going to need to cut this piece of tubing quite possibly with a razor knife. And then the very first uh, step actually we're going to do here using this tool is to remove this little tiny zip tie they have on the dual flush valve um, because we're going to be replacing that with a bigger heavier one that doesn't doesn't break during the installation so a little bit about these components that we can refer back to during the installation uh, this is this is the fill valve the fast fill valve um, which replaces the float type valve um, and it has this uh, this little water fill valve right here this green uh, thing that moves to open and close and that's part of our final adjustment and that's this connects um, to this nipple here and this part goes clips onto the overflow tube. Um, so I'm, I'm showing this now because it's easier to see than down inside the toilet. And then the dual flush valve um, will be adjusting this, this blue part, which clicks up and down with audible clicks uh, for its adjustment. This is for the fast, or rather the light flush, I should say, the, um, the small flush. Uh, adjustment and then this this green one here which I typically don't do much with um, is for the large flush adjustment and I actually haven't really ever had to change that on older toilets um, so here's our additionally here's our, our valve I chose this type instead of the push button but it, it splits so this inside one is the light flush and this outside one is the heavier flush that uses more water and it's this inside one that really um, makes the savings the water savings because this is the one that's used you know four out of five times and this is where you really dial it in with this dual flush valve with this adjustment here to get it to use the absolute minimum amount of water to uh, flush the toilet typically four out of five times. This toilet is going to be a great example of savings because it's an old school type with a ball float arm and flapper valve, very inefficient. Five kids use this toilet on a daily basis so that um, uses a lot of water so it's potentially a lot of savings okay so I just test flush and let it refill and the first thing 
we're going to do is make a pencil mark. This water level actually seems awfully low, but anyway, we're going to make a pencil mark identifying the top of the existing water level in the bowl. And um, we'll refer back to this at the end when we're making the adjustments on the on the light flush to try to get it to function. Okay, I've got a towel down here and a, a couple of gladware, you know, bowls, whatever fits underneath, they're ready. Positioned underneath this to catch the water because even after shutting off the angle stop, which is the first step, well, the second step after marking the water level in the bowl, Oh, this one needs to be replaced. That'll be for another day. Anyway, turn that off. And then... It's a lot of water we're going to be using less of. So anyway, after flushing all this water with the valve turned off, as much water as you can possibly get out. There's still quite a bit in the bottom of the tank and it's going to come out and make a mess as soon as we undo this um, fill valve assembly and pull it out. It's just going to be a hole in the bottom of the porcelain tank right there and that's all going to run out right here. That's why you put a pan underneath. First step. I keep saying first step. This is like the third step. Disconnect the supply line. Bottom of the tank, get a little bit of water coming out. And then after that, we're gonna disconnect this nut right here, which I'll need a pair of pliers. Start leaking out whatever's left in the tank. Probably going to fill that container and, and then some. So, this particular step, also um, on some older toilets, this assembly, this tube, and that are metal. And the first one I did was like that. And you might want to rethink your timeline if that's the case, because I had to really fight that due to rust to, to get it apart and get it off in order to get this out. Um, and it took much longer to do that particular installation. However, without that being a problem, I can do one of these in less than an hour now. So with the nut off the bottom, pull the fill pipe out of the overflow tube and this whole assembly can come out and go down into the junk parts pile. And then the next step is going to be to remove the flapper from this and pull the flapper and well, actually the next step should be the flush arm. And these are left hand thread. So we'll loosen this up and then we're going to have to undo the chain. Okay, so with the flapper or the this not taken off the flush handle, this comes out. And some of these might be oriented the other way out of the front. The last one I did was on this side, but this one's on the side. Pull that out, it just leaves that square hole. Then remove the flapper and the associated chain. And then this one has kind of a flapper retrofit seal. So I think, it, yeah, that's pretty well stuck in there. Well, it doesn't matter. The new kit will seal okay against this surface. It can be angled or flat, so that should work. So for a quick summary of the reinstallation, now that the tank is empty of all the parts that need to come out. 
We're going to be reinstalling and doing a quick preliminary adjustment of the fill valve and the, the uh, water tube and the upper, well first the lower half and then the upper half of the two-stage flush valve and um, I've made available a new heavier zip tie for the back side of this connecting clamp and then we'll be putting in the, the dual flush handle and connecting the control box and then doing our final adjustment. Um, that goes back in is going to be the fast fill valve and it connects with this um, this T-nut thing and this gasket, this rubber gasket goes inside down in the bottom of the toilet tank and this nut um, goes underneath and that's what holds it in place and there's no sealer or anything needed it's just just goes in dry like that it also makes audible clicks um, and you want to go about three clicks and you just want it hand tight don't use tools on this and these little tabs will bend in order to prevent you from over tightening so you're using these to tighten it and they'll start bending as it starts clicking so we just seat the rubber down inside and this nipple right here points kind of towards the back of the tank at a 45 degree angle. So this is going to go down inside that hole. T-nut goes on the bottom. And I'm using those wings to tighten it. And there's one, two, three clicks, that's good enough. Preliminary adjustment, the fast fill valve. So you kind of grab it by the top and push on this little part right here. And you just twist clockwise and it unlocks. And then you can hear it make those clicking sounds as you go up and down. The instructions say to align it about with the top of the tank. It seems a little bit high, but we'll go ahead and follow the instructions and then relock it back into position. You can hear the click. And then this is the float lock. And right now it doesn't matter what we do with it, but when you turn the water back on, they use this to lock the float in its top position closed um, to keep debris and stuff from going in. But anyway, we did the preliminary up down. You just unlock it, clicks up and down, get it where about even with the top of the tank and then click it back. Cut. Okay, before I can put the double flush valve on, I forgot to remove this one little cap thing. It needs to come off of the riser pipe, so the riser pipe is smooth and clear on the top. Cut. Okay, this is our dual flush valve. So the first thing is to twist these two halves relative to each other, 180 degrees and unlock, there it is. These tabs align with these openings and this part comes off. This is the lower part that we need to seal in. And before we do that, we're gonna take and, this is replacing the zip tie that I cut off in the beginning. We're gonna put a much heavier, better zip tie on here and just leave it loose for now. Cut off some of the extra, we don't need all that. We're gonna grab these other parts. Bring it over to the toilet, and then this goes down over the riser tube and down onto where the flush valve was before, the flapper valve, I should say. And what we're trying to do is this blue part in the bottom needs to seal against it needs to form a permanent seal on the opening that used to be where the flapper opened and closed that's just going to make a, a permanent seal right there kind of a snug fit on the back which is unfortunate but the idea here is that the blue part of the seal makes a nice square contact with the opening for the for the old flapper valve and then we're going to take you can see this leftover space here and you take this cam thing this this wedge kind of bushing thing and just put it in there to, and twist it to 
fill the space and then this rubber stop seal goes over the top and all that's going to do really is just hold everything downward in place against the top of that cam thing and just make sure that it's all gonna seal correctly and I sometimes wait even until I'm doing the adjustment to make sure it's not leaking before I tighten this zip tie um, but I, I think we got a pretty good seal there okay. this these two tabs here will lock in to these corresponding ears on the bottom half and it can twist either way you just kind of have to see which way it's best going to fit around the riser tube I think I'm going to go this way clockwise well, if I turn it too far it's going to come back out so additionally the that's gonna work pretty good. Next is the flush handle, and it's got this square flange. It goes into this like a square peg in a square hole. This lock nut is left-handed thread, so you're gonna spin it counterclockwise to tighten it, and you don't have to go nuts. Just get it get it snug like so. On the control box, it has a blue connection and a green connection. Um, this handle we chose, this type of handle, is has the green, so we're going to need to use this one, and I believe it will work upside down. We're going to try it. You just have to squeeze this in, and you should hear a click as it goes on, and there it is. It's locked in place, and it would appear that it is working. Okay, and then this, uh, this other fill hose goes on to this nipple on the back side of this you know, top valve on the fast fill valve, and then this clips onto the riser tube, and as you can see, it's going to interfere with the tank, so we're going to cut about an inch off of this. Cut about an inch and a half off of this filler tube. I'm going to just stick it onto the nipple from this top water valve now, and then this little thing clips onto the riser tube as such, and points, directs the tube, directs the fill hose down into the tube. So we've got our basic installation complete. The next thing to do is to reconnect the supply hose. So reconnecting the supply hose to the bottom of the new, they call it a fast fill. And then I'm gonna go ahead and lock this up and turn this on so when they talk about this this float lock this thing is called the float lock in the instructions they make the assumption that you may have to turn the water off to the entire house and not just have an angle stop which can sometimes generate debris and what they say to do is reconnect everything back up and then run the bathtub to get any subsequent debris out of the line before unlocking this um, that's not really necessary if you have an angle stop and you can valve it off right at the wall. It, it, none of that's going to happen, so. Wow. It's going up. Okay, so the first thing I noticed, you got water running, is it's filling above the overflow tube. So we're going to make a little adjustment here with the float and push the float down into the water so that it so that it shuts off sooner before water can start going out there so a counterclockwise twist of this blue knob right here pushes the float down into the water which will subsequently shut the water fill off sooner so we'll, we'll try that pretty close to our lines that we marked at the beginning and there's two ways to adjust the quick flush which is really the meat and potatoes of this whole system which is done by this inner inner lever right here the the instructions say to watch um, the level and for ripples after the bowl fills 
and you're going to adjust it one of two ways. This blue thing, we're going to push down. You can hear the audible clicks on that adjustment. And then additionally, we can open this top valve, which sends water directly into the bowl. And they say start with it open and then work your way back closed. So let's give that a shot. Try the quick flush. Very good. It was really fast and apparently it was enough, so I can probably back it off a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and click this guy up some. Take back like two clicks and try it again. And that is evidently not enough water. We had it right the first time. So after studying the instructions right here where they talk about the quick flush and the full flush and making some adjustments, I think I finally got it. They say basically you're, you're going back and forth between this auxiliary fill valve and this um, flush valve quick flush adjustment, the blue one, to get it to where it flushes correctly, fills back to the line, and then they talk about rippling in the water after it's full. What they're talking about is this auxiliary fill valve dumping water in late, which you don't want. So you have, But as you close that, it, it doesn't flush as well, so then you have to continue to click the blue uh, flush valve adjustment thing down until you get a balance like this, where it will, in fact, function and flush all the way, but then fill to the correct line and stop filling uh, at the right time. And I, I got that on the quick flush, which is really the, the critical, because that's the four out of five use. And like I said, our five kids use this toilet every day, so this is going to make a big difference. And then I did, in fact, adjust the green one and pull it down a little bit. That's this one on this side. I mean, pull it up, thereby uh, pulling the water usage down. So a full flush is still on the outside handle. A much more considerable flush and water usage. Um, and that's after I adjusted the clicker up a little bit to cut down on it. Um, but I think, I think that's where I'm going to leave it and try it. So to demonstrate the difference and see the actual savings, we'll do a full flush on the outside handle and see how much water drops. There it goes. Tell from here, but that's about half way down the tank. Now, in contrast, we'll do a quick flush, which is the inside handle. And it's done already, and the water level dropped about an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter. And it takes about, I don't know, I would say that's. 10% of the time it's taking to fill it up and shut it off compared to the full flush. That's going to be huge water savings.